Hi, my name is Stephen McGee and I'm the author of Electrical Forensics and we're here to do some electrical forensics work on this pink cell phone and we're going to see if we can fry an egg with the heat that this cell phone generates when it's on a phone call and that phone call is going to be one hour long and the hour long phone call was chosen based on the time I spend on the phone with my parents and that phone call with my parents is typically an hour. So this is a breast cancer cell phone. It's actually the Susan G. Komen breast cancer cell phone. You see there's a little write-up about it there. It's made by track phone. So that's the model that we're going to do this demonstration with. And it is already proven that there's a link to cancer with cell phones. So this is the International Agency for Research on Cancer and the World Health Organization. This is their press release number 208 and it says the IARC classifies radio frequency electromagnetic fields as possibly carcinogenic to humans and that is based on an increased risk for glioma a malig malignant type of brain cancer associated with wireless phone use. So research is out there that already says this kind of stuff is dangerous. So we have a little tub here. This is going to sit on top of the phone when it's on the phone call. And we're going to crack an egg into this tub and then the egg will get heated by the phone for an hour and then we'll see what the egg is like afterwards. And we have a radio frequency meter here which is going to record the levels of radio frequency being emitted by the phone. And we have a frying pan because we're trying to fry an egg so we're going to do it in a frying pan as you would normally do. And there's a little bit of information about this in the manual. So this is the manual for that phone. It has a health and safety information section and in there you'll find a little paragraph right here that talks about the ability for this phone to produce heat and its ability to possibly produce minor burns. So evidence is already there that this may have the ability to cook an egg but there's only one way to actually find out whether it can cook an egg and that is to crack open an egg and see if an hour long phone call can cook that egg. So we're going to start the experiment and we're going to put the camera onto time lapse and you can now see the time lapse of the egg being irradiated by the heat that the phone generates and let's see what happens. So there we have the time lapse. Let's take a look at the eggs. And uh, you'll notice that I had to crack two eggs to completely fill the tub. If I slush them around, you can see what's going on. You can see that up here, the egg thickened. So we did actually get to fry the egg based on this experiment. So, Let's take a little look at what is going on with the phone in that area. So this is the phone, We've taken the back off, taken the battery out, and we can see what's going on. So there's the battery connections. There's a micro SD card here and the phone SIM card. So the thickening of the egg occurred in this area of the phone. And you'll notice there's a camera, so that's the camera lens. And you'll notice this. This looks like it's some form of antenna system. So I can't be sure about that, but that's certainly 
or it looks like to an electronics engineer, you'll notice that the similar metal strips around the phone, so this seems to be some form of antenna system over here, and down here on the base appears to be some form of antenna system, we can't be sure, they're not labelled, but certainly one thing that we do know is that in this area of the phone is where we saw the egg thicken during that hour long phone call. So there does seem to be something going on with the heat that this phone is producing. And I'm not going to eat this egg because it's probably got biological damage. So you can see that we certainly got a lot of thickening of the egg. It's now stuck to the case that we cooked it in. And the reason why I say that egg has probably got biological damage is because of this book, Curing Electromagnetic Hypersensitivity. It's by Stephen McGee. I am Stephen McGee. I wrote this book. And I was electromagnetic. I did have electromagnetic hypersensitivity. And I had it for a few years before I realized what was going on. And I have now cured that using various techniques, which are documented in that book. But I came to the conclusion that I had brain clots. So I had used a cell phone for about a decade. And uh, I'd sat near Wi-Fi devices and wireless communication devices, been around a lot of high powered radio frequency transmitters. I'm an electrical electronics engineer and have worked extensively with electrical electronics. So I was a little bit surprised when I came down with electromagnetic hypersensitivity and uh, never heard of it until I got it. And then I found out about it through research. And I found that there was a, a large number of people displaying electromagnetic hypersensitivity. And they were all in the same situation as me and they were trying to understand what it was. So I'm one of the fortunate ones who actually managed to clear up my particular variety of electromagnetic hypersensitivity. So that's the LG cell phone. It does seem to be able to have an effect on an egg over an hour. And I urge caution with cell phones and just because it's branded as being a charitable breast cancer research cell phone doesn't mean it's safe. And there are many, many documented effects of wireless radiation that occur below the heating levels that the Federal Communications Commission uses to certify the cell phones for use by the public. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. And if you want to find out more about the subject, curing electromagnetic hypersensitivity discusses the biological health problems that can happen with exposure to devices like these. And electrical forensics is an in-depth examination of how electricity, electronics, and wireless communications devices can impact your health. I wish you the best of health and thank you.